colleagues and some has been introduced to a couple of coaches from Northern Michigan University. Uh, today we're going to go over some of the clean progressions that I go through with our kids. Uh, this is we're going to go over the power clean first, and then we'll move into some hand clean if we got time. So I believe we got 30 minutes total. So we're going to try and get through as much of that as we can. Uh, all this stuff's pretty easy. You know, it's all stuff if you have. You, if you don't have kettlebells, you can use dumbbells. Obviously, I, you know, I think we all got barbells. And, a little bit of weight on there, so it's all stuff that you can utilize with your kids. So this is John Norcott. John is an assistant strength conditioning coach at Wayne State University. Uh, he's going to do all our demo today. All right. So when we start, I start all of our kids off with with kettlebells. So now when we're programming, we'll say, now this is, let's say I got an 18 year old freshman that just came into college. I don't care if he can clean or not. All right, there's myself and maybe, you know possibly one other staff member. So we don't have we don't have a whole lot of staff to go in there and say okay, you now this is what we're going to do and we're going to take our time on this and that. Everybody's going to do the same exact exercises until everybody else can do it correctly and then we'll move on to the next step. So the first thing that we do is we go with a single single kettlebell. We go for a clean pull off the ground. I want to stand. That's okay. No, go ahead. All right, clean pull off the ground. So we want our, our feet in the same same position that you would use while you're cleaning. All right, we're up and we're shrugging. So we're going to do two sets of five. Let's just go one set of five, John. How's that sound? Uh, you don't like those high reps, John. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he has five reps there. All right. Then once every single one of the kids can get his ankles, you know, his knees and his hips all extended using the kettlebell, we might hit that for, like, a, uh, we walk in the weight room, okay? The kids grab their sheets. They know they're going to get to their racks. And they go, they go at each every single guy, at every single rack, ready to go, and they're in their line. All right, two to guy, two to three guys on each rack. We blow the whistle. We start off with this movement. They're hitting two to three, two to three sets with just this movement. Then we'll move into our course. So for me, it's about you know it's about four to five minutes long. It's nothing, it's nothing with an extended period of time. We're coaching them up on a basic movement, and then we move on to the next one. It's not as extensive as you know you're sitting there, you got to spend ten minutes. You know, in total, work on your power points. So you just gotta get them in, get them moving, make sure they're doing things correctly. Now we go to a double kettlebell clean pull. So we're up and we're shrugging. Same thing. Ankles, knees, and hips. Ankles, knees, and hips. He's gonna hit five reps here. Now his feet are in relatively the same position. Some of you guys might ask, you know, how do you? Why, why are we going on the inside with a kettlebell? I think it's uncomfortable to go anywhere else. We're just trying to teach the movement without without having the barbell yet. All right. So once we're done there, we go into we go into our kettlebell high pull. So we're going to pull off the ground, same position, head up, back tight, and we're up. Now, some people don't like to teach the the, the bend of the elbow for their high pulls. I do because I think it really helps our kids with the ability to you know, get the bar up where they need to. Some people they teach their high pulls here and they drop the bar, and that's fine. Everybody's got a different way to do things. You know, there's a million ways to skin a cat. This is the way that we do things at NME. All right. So we're going to pull high, make sure that they, got, they can hold on to the kettlebells effectively. Same thing, ankles, knees, and hips extend. Would it be the same amount of weight or yeah, so, you're using right so here? So for us, we're going to put two kettlebells in every single rack. You know, our big guys, hopefully they have the heaviest weight. Sometimes it's our running backs that do, you know, just because we got some soft big guys. So it's just, you know, sometimes <laughs> you got some big guys. Um, but we try and put two, two kettlebells in every single rack. Luckily, where I'm at, we have a lot of kettlebells. If we run out of kettlebells, then we go to our, we go to our dumbbells. Uh, but we really try and make sure, so like we have a freshman, a freshman tailback, or let's go a freshman wide receiver, because usually the ones that are underdeveloped, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, you know, we're going to put them on our lighter weight, obviously, mm -hmm. and the big guys, hopefully they can pull the heavier ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're always going to have your, like, you know, your big skill guy that's in an odd way that, that can handle, you know, a bunch of weight. But you're, you know, for me, I've usually found that, like, our offensive linemen are extremely soft. <laughs> and our, you know, our, our skill guys are really underdeveloped, but they're not, but they're not soft. You know, they're just underdeveloped. And our guys in the middle are usually our toughest and strongest guys. Our big skill guys are always, are always our best guys in the weight room. That's for me anyway. All right. Now we're gonna move the kettlebell. The kettlebell's out. Now we're gonna go to a barbell. All right. Now John, John's an extremely strong man, so these movements might look, might look really freaking fast with the, with the barbell, okay? So we're gonna go with a, a, a standard first pull. So when we go into our clean position, all right, let's go over this real quick. Our head is up, our back is tight. All right, this pocket in your elbow, so I tell the kids, the pocket in your elbow fits right there on your knee. 
All right, puts you in a good solid position. His toes, all right, they're not pointed. They're not pointed completely outward. You know, if you got a kid that wants to point them slightly out a little bit, I'm okay with that. But I don't want to see, I don't want to see a real outward position here. I want to see straight forward or slightly out. His arms, his hands are locked in. And look, this is a really, really good starting position. Really, really good starting position. So we're going to go first pull. Now, first pull, he's going to maintain the same position and pull right here to the bottom of the knee. All right, to the bottom of the knee. Let's go ahead and 10 reps there. So head up, back tight. We're pulling right there to the bottom of the knee. So you want to maintain that good position. Now, when I, I'm not lying to you when I say that I'll do this for two weeks. All right, so we, got, we have 18-year-old kids. I don't care if they can clean 400 pounds when they're 18 years old or 19 years old. I'll just be honest with you. I want our kids to be really strong, but I'd rather them be way more effective in the movements than be than be really strong and really bad at what we're doing. So we spend a lot of time, a lot of time doing simple things like this because I say, okay, I got freshmen, they're not gonna play this year. Let's just make sure they can really clean effectively in the off season. Right? Make sure they can clean effectively in the off season. So we spend time going through the season, we'll spend two weeks on this. And then we'll move to the clean pole. We'll spend two weeks on the clean pole. Right? we got like 11 or 12 week season if we're lucky enough to make the playoffs at NMU. All right, then we'll, we'll kind of elongate. So we're up, straight up, and big shrug. All right, up and big shrug. So this is our next movement here. We're going to have five reps here. And when we're programming this, we'll probably hit four sets of five the first week. And then we'll hit four sets of four or four sets of three the second week with a slightly heavier weight. Again, you don't want to put so much weight on the bar that's going to mess up the mechanics of the movement. So a lot of guys get stuck on, hey, let's uh, you know, let's put 315 pounds on the bar and try and pick it up and shrug it. I think that's I think that's stupid. Okay, I, mean, I think you got to make sure that they are, can pull. You know, they can move the bar fast. They can get full extension. You know, full full contraction here with their traps and make sure that they're moving effectively. They're moving effectively. From here, we're going to go to our our power high pull. So we're gonna pull all the way up. Like I said, he's gonna break the elbows and up. All right, five reps here, break the elbows and up. What I wanna see, like John could get more hip extension, all right? He could get a little more hip, there you go, Johnny, have way. All right, that's the last rep here, okay? So we wanna make sure that with, that with that weight, we're really emphasizing the hip extension of what we're trying to do. Ankles, knees, and hip all the time. So I think, have you ever heard that, that baseball term they call it, stay within the 17 inches? You, know, you always want to have your standards and to play the 17 inches. You always want to stay within your 17 inches, don't change it. All right, so if you have a standard and you want those ankles, knees, and those hips extended, then, then live by it and make sure that everybody in the room can do it before you move on to the next one. All right, so like I said, we don't have five people on staff or four people on staff or three people on staff. So we got to make sure everybody can move effectively before we move on to the next one. And if they can't, then you know, if we're gonna hold the rest of the group back, then we try and cater programming to those two or three or four guys that can't move effectively. You know, maybe we stick on high pull for a while and make sure they get that down correctly. All right, so we just did high pull. We're gonna to go to a pull to a quarter catch. All right, so pull to a quarter catch. So we're here, hand up. Make sure they're racking the elbows in a nice and, nice and tight high position. So for me, our biggest coaching cue is, Jack, can you show me his bad elbows? So bad elbows, okay? We don't, we don't want those guys in the downward position here. We want them up a full rack, 90 degrees, 90 degrees position at the top, all right? So if a lot of guys you're gonna, you're gonna look at, they're gonna, they don't have the flexibility to get here, all right? You have to just drill them and drill them and drill them with light weight until they can get that movement down correctly. Is, you know, and then work on their mobility in those in the different regions to make sure that they can get in that position. They're they're 18 years old. You know, we're, like we're there to make them stronger, we're there to make them better, but we're also there to like you know critically develop them. So you got to take your time. They're you know they're freshmen in college, they're redshirted. Take your time and make sure that they're doing things the right way. All right. So before we go into anything else, let me talk about this. So the first thing I do, and we kind I kind of miss this step. All right. First thing I do is make sure that. Everybody can front squat effectively because obviously at the bottom of your clean, you know, we have to make sure that we come up in a front squat effectively. So before we even start any of this stuff, we work on our basics in terms of in terms of our front squat and also our deadlift. We got to be able to deadlift effectively, front squat effectively before we can kind of go through go through the extensive movements that we're doing here. All right. Now we're going to go to a quarter catch. Right up, back tight, quarter catch, drop. All right. Now a lot of people think that this is a is, is a full catch, but it's not. Okay, 
a lot of your guys are going to get it. You know, guys or girls are going to get into this position, and I think that that you know, for me, like I said, it's a million ways to skin the cat, right? There's a million ways to do things, and you can tell me I'm wrong. That's fine, and I'll tell you why why I'm doing things the way I'm doing them, all right? But I think that when they, when you can go through a four inch motion, all right, four inch motion, get your butt all the way down into a full squat. It makes things a lot more effective. All the muscles are firing. Okay, and I also think that catching once those guys, you know, guys get stronger, girls get stronger. You're catching, you know, 300 pounds, or even if it's 225 or 185, you know, if you're, you know, you're cleaning, right? You're catching at the bottom. I really think it helps with the stabilization within your knees, okay, and your hips, and everything that comes along with it. It'll prevent some injuries that might come forward because you're putting that stress on them right now, right now. All right, so let me go full catch. Head up back tight. We pull, all right, full catch, elbows up, maintain that solid position. So we're up, and good. All right, we got three more reps. Tired now. Here we go. I'd be tired too. Come on, there you go. One more. Good. All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's our full progression for our cleans. All right, so you're looking at a series of steps and how I would program that. We're going to take it on a two week on a two week cycle. So we're going to do two weeks doing this exercise, two weeks doing this exercise, two weeks doing this, this exercise, and hopefully, effectively, as a coach, you can make them do things the right way along that period of time. All right, along those two weeks, just keep on hammering those little movements. All right, I think we got we got about ten minutes, so we're going to go over. Our hand clean, and then we're gonna be, then we're gonna be done. So some guys, so I'll just, I'll be honest with you. Right now, where I'm at, we don't have, um, we don't have the flooring to be able to drop, drop weight. All right, and we can't clean from the floor because we have this, this, this and we're on the second floor. So it's, <laughs> so we're on the second floor, and we got, we have a half inch, half inch flooring. So our only option, clean wise, is we hand clean. All right, we hand clean. So, um, so in terms of hand cleaning, the progression that we use there, we're going to start with our with our one our one kettlebell. Like I said, we'll we'll start off first five minutes of the day here. We're up, pull and shrug. Out of that position, we'll hit five reps there. Now this is very similar to the, you know the power clean. Obviously, this is going to be you know, almost identical. Now we're in hang position, we're gonna dip right below the knees. We're up and shrug. Hit that for five reps. And now we're gonna to go to the high pull. Right? And we're gonna to go to the high pull for five reps. Take a break after this one. <laughs> okay. We're gonna hit this for five reps and then we're gonna move into the next segment. All right? But we wanna make sure that we're, again, just hammering those same movements same movements that we were with the power clean, but making them effective with the, with the hand clean. All right. The other thing too is that we have to teach our guys to control the weight on the way down. They can't drop the weight. All right. They can't drop the weight. So when they when they pick one of those bars here, they better have great grip because they got to bring it back down here and then set it on the rack. All right. That's they have to do it every single rep, every single set. There's nothing we can do about it. We're not gonna have a floor, and then I got I have no weight room. All right. So you know, we gotta be able to do my job. <laughs> so we got so everything that we do on that end is very very controlled in terms of how much we're cleaning and what we're doing. You good? Yep. All right. So now we're gonna move into a uh, power, or a hang hang shrug. So we're gonna dip to the knees, pull and big shrug, and pull and big shrug. We'll do this for two weeks with our guys. All right, increasing the weight as we go on. Then once we get, once we get done with that, then we're gonna go to a hang high pull. All right, hang high pull. So you can see how these movements are similar, but they're just they're, they're tweaked just a little bit for the movement. So five reps. Okay. Good. I done sounds pretty good at this. Sometimes you gotta, you're gonna have some coaching cues that you gotta kinda get with it. All right. And then from there, you don't have to go through every single one of them. Quarter, half. Then you're gonna go into your quarter, your half, and your full catch. 